welcome to the 27th episode of the 6th season of the Ubuntu podcast. It's Wednesday the 28th of August and in this episode we're going to discuss what's been in the news. We'll also talk about the latest happenings in the Ubuntu community and if you're watching or listening live you can send us messages using the chat facility on the website and in the IRC channel. We are currently broadcasting live on Google Hangouts so if you go somewhere you'll be able to find a url <laughs> where where uh go to our twitter thing just to like go maximize go to uh twitter.com twitter. slash upc and then you can That's click the, the link to youtube from there yeah yeah and we'll be there and also we'll be releasing the video assuming it all records okay after afterwards yeah this is true yeah so, so you haven't you missed, missed out. Fun, you can still <laughs> I've just posted it. the links into our. So you can see our oh, wow. semi-obscured faces with microphones on video. Yes, yes. it's like having an orange nose. Our pixelated <laughs> faces. <laughs> so anyway, I'm Laura, ah. and joining me this week are Mark. Hi, Laura. Alan. Hello. <laughs> and Tony. Good evening. Hi. There's the enthusiasm you've all been waiting for. <laughs> so, yeah, are you I think gonna, we just have to get on. Are you going to stick around for the whole show this time? I'll try. <laughs> right, okay. Slack off this time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, let's get on with it. It's time for the news. And in the first item this week, uh, Google have been accused of intentionally preventing the new Chromecast dongle from playing locally stored media. So for those who don't know, the Chromecast is a $35 uh, dongle that plugs into the HDMI port on your uh, TV and gets its power from a USB port. And you can stream uh, video straight onto your TV from selected services. Um, and a chat by the name of Kushik Dutta, uh, created a third-party Aircast app uh, for the Chromecast, and he found that in the latest update, they've removed support for the video playback API he was using. Hmm. Right. What, what's Aircast? Sorry. Uh, so this was a tool that allowed you to stream other content to the um, to the Chromecast, to right. the TV. So by default, the, the apps it's provided with let you do Netflix and Google Play Video and YouTube Um Okay. Whereas he had an app which basically let you stream any video stream from your device. So if you had like local media on a server at home, which, you know, many, many people, people do, do um, then you could stream it directly to your TV um, without having to use a third party service like YouTube and and uh, and subscribe to Netflix or whatever. And mm. uh, he he claimed in uh, in a post on um, Google Plus that it stopped working because Google changed something in the API. So what did Google have to say about this? What did they say, Mark? Um, they said that the current SDK is a developer preview and they want to provide a great experience for users and developers before making the SDK and additional apps more broadly available. They didn't say they want to allow people to do what he was trying to do specifically. But also they didn't say that somebody just messed up and broke it. Yeah. So... It's essentially, you know, they're, they're still trying to decide exactly what it's going to have before they say it's finished and apps will continue working as they are developed. Yeah, to right. be fair, they might provide a different API for playing local content. Yeah. That's entirely possible. Um, that that, <laughs> that reason just... they've given um, that the current SDK is a developer preview that, that sounds exactly what we say when well, the phone, was, when the phone breaks. Say, yeah, <laughs> it sounds a bit like the Ubuntu Touch excuse. Yeah. <laughs> Stop, uh, well, it's not ready yet. Somebody it's, probably just renamed things. Well, possibly. I mean, it's that simple. Yeah. But if you rename things, don't you also document the new names? Well, it's preview, mm. isn't it? Well, interestingly... Uh, <laughs> it, excuse you you it get work. around to it eventually. <laughs> yeah. it's, um, it uh, has been announced today by... Um, Kushik, that uh, the Google Chromecast team have apparently invited him for lunch on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that to uh, to discuss his needs or to shut him up? Um, well, <laughs> but who knows? Not the mafia. <laughs> are you implying that Google are going to eat him? <laughs> <laughs> They're inviting him for lunch in a public place. No, I just thought they might give him such a nice lunch that he no longer wishes to complain about Google. Right. 
Did they you do, do they good do food? Do good lunches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, their burritos are very nice. Yeah. <laughs> the bottles breakfast. After four of those, you can't talk anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, what else is in the news? Well, the big Ubuntu Edge campaign, the most successful crowdfunded campaign in the history of ever um it was unsuccessful absolutely <laughs> failed to meet its target by a mere 20 million dollars or about two-thirds of its value <laughs> <laughs> um, still so so <laughs> not all. Say, say something nice laura <laughs> it broke records did it, it though it d- yes it did yeah. did it not mark well did it did it still if it wasn't successful do the records still count yes if it because you they're saying it raised more money than any campaign but it didn't raise any money because yes, they did. didn't get the money Let's well they, 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 they had the money this. they had the money for a very short period <laughs> in escrow well, well yeah at indiegogo. indiegogo had some money yeah. <laughs> well this is people are saying oh well it doesn't count because it was just pledged money it wasn't real money but actually it was real money the money went out of people people's accounts yeah. they paid that money now, okay, okay so if it was on kickstarter Instead of Indiegogo, would it still have broke? Would it still have counted? Well, I think there's a bigger debate around that because that is just people saying, "Oh yeah, I'll chip in," mm. and that's Whereas, a different. Yeah, I mean that's different issues as and, well. And sometimes those people who say I'll chip in don't, don't actually chip pay in. up. Mm. Exactly. Whereas the people who uh, funded this project did pay the money. They had the money. They paid the money. It counted. So it did raise that money. You know, it did go I, where it was supposed to go. It's one of those hotly debated things in the social blogosphere, or whatever mm. you want to call it. Where <laughs> oh, please never say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. Uh, where you know, some people will argue that it didn't. It, it, it wasn't a record because the campaign didn't finish successfully. But and I can, and I can understand that, and I and I can understand why people might have that opinion. But. The fact is, it still raised a truckload of money. Yeah, that's true. Which is worthy of note. Was it still not a, a record pledge level anyway, yes. yeah. if you call it a pledge? Yeah. Well, the whole thing about the Ubuntu Edge is that it's the Formula One of phones, or was going to be the Formula One of phones. And you think about it as a Formula One race. Somebody can get the fastest lap. I'm just waiting for the punchline here. This is a good analogy. I'm very proud of this. <laughs> he's right. looking, he's I'm surprised looking. it's not a Doctor Who analogy. Right. <laughs> Somebody can get the fastest lap of the race in lap three, for argument's sake, and then crash and burn in lap ten. They still had the fastest lap of the race. Yeah, that's mm. true. You know, just because you don't necessarily go the full distance, you can still get the records early on. That's true. Mm. Yeah. yeah, see, huh? One thing that one thing that did occur to me reading there's a, an interesting analysis on the Guardian website. One thing that did occur to me is that the well the um, the previous campaigns which have raised huge amounts of money have all raised a huge amount of money above their target, whereas mm. this campaign raised a huge amount of money and didn't meet like more more than they raised and still didn't meet its target. But it makes me wonder whether if it had had a lower target, say. 10 million and it had reached that would the buzz created around it reaching that huge target have gone on to but how much did those other ones raise overall well the 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 biggest before was the pebble watch which had raised about 10.2 million so it's still vastly less absolute terms yes money. yes but but then you, it becomes much more of a gamble for the people behind the campaign. That's true. Because if they reach their lower target of ten million, yeah. they have to make the thing, and presumably there were reasons why they wanted thirty-two million yes. and not ten million. Yes, Whereas, you know, if the set, if it costs thirty-two million and you set your target to be thirty-two million, but fine, you either, you either <laughs> make it or you don't. You so the, the rationale for it being thirty-two million is because they wanted to make forty thousand devices, which is what we were told was the minimum. Um, order quantity <laughs> if right. you're going to you know put your credit card down you you need to order 40,000 of these devices to get the um the bill of materials down to $830 yeah um with the discounts it came down to $600 for the first 5,000 but that didn't sustain it through the rest of the mm. campaign mm. Uh, but uh Jane Silver has said that Canonical still plans to bring an Ubuntu phone to market for early 2014 Oh, really? Just a slightly less cool one. Yeah, not a Formula One. Maybe a banger. <laughs> <laughs> Different kind of race uh, you analogy You should work in marketing. <laughs> no, I absolutely shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> the first Ubuntu touch phone will be a Vauxhall Viva with a knocking noise. <laughs> <laughs> nice callback. Mm-hmm. Uh, Laura, what else has been in the news? Uh, Microsoft CEO Steve Linux equals equals cancer balmer has announced he is to retire within 12 months oh 
Uh, oh, is well. it a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know, really. Um, <laughs> it depends who's taking over. <laughs> well, there is that. But he's well, certainly not been a friend to Linux and open source over the years. Although he has... Although he's overseen Microsoft being more open than they have been in the past. Even though he was a bit... Mm. Hostile before. It's hard to know whether he had any influence over that opening up and the creation of the Microsoft Open Technologies Group or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's hard to know. Given you know, there's always the excuse that Microsoft is a huge company and they do so many different things, yeah. and you can't you can't blame the entire company for. Um, you know, failures in one division, yeah. like you know, the Zune or the Kin. Uh, or but presumably, if he, if the CEO was fervently against the idea of there being Microsoft Open Technology, you'd think he'd know about it. Yeah, do you think he would have said, "Wait a minute, not on my watch"? I'm not convinced he's completely against Open Technologies. He was against the GPL, yes, and was against the the fact that the GPL spreads from one product to another if you use one product inside another. He's yeah. not the only one. Yeah, yeah, true. And, you know, that's... that's Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yes, but we don't know who's going to replace him. And um, I'm sure he'll have a good retirement. I think he's made a quid <laughs> or two, his, isn't Yes, it? with his <laughs> huge amounts of Microsoft stock, which, you think uh, he'll which do jumped same? hugely when he announced that he was going to retire. <laughs> uh, like, yeah. it's enormous, the amount that they jumped. <laughs> yeah, 9% or something? Yeah. That would be a good way to retire. Announce you're going to retire. Wait for the stock to go up. <laughs> Dump all your stock. <laughs> yeah. Do you think he'll um, do a, a Bill and Melinda Gates and uh, go and cure something, you know, as bad or as uh, as significant as malaria? You know, I don't even know what he looks like. Big bald guy, usually sweating, usually jumping around quite yeah, a lot on yelling. stage. Yeah. Yeah. Developers or buy Windows 95 for yeah. $99. I just don't think I've ever seen a picture of him. You, you probably, wow. if you saw his face, you'd probably recognise it. It mm. looks it looks angry. Yeah. <laughs> it's distinctive. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. What else, Mark? What else, Alan? Well, um, are we going to, uh, to say that now? Yes. Or are we going to, okay. Tesla cars <laughs> are vulnerable to a remote hijack. The Tesla Model S electric cars have been found to be vulnerable to remote hijacking because they have a REST API with some dodgy authentication. Oh. Is their um, Tesla Model S not ready yet? Is it a developer preview? Uh, <laughs> no, I think it's an actual car that people have. Oh. And it has, uh, presumably, it's got some sort of um, wireless access point built in, which you can connect to, yeah. and you can send it requests over... Um, an HTTP REST API. What, like, like an AR drone? Yes. Can you fly it around like an you AR drone? You can't fly, fly yeah. it around, but you can open the sunroof, flash the lights on and off, which in an electric car is <laughs> not ideal if someone could sit there flashing the lights on and off all night when it's in the garage, and then you get up in the morning and the battery's dead. Be annoying if we were in the street as well. Yeah, it would. And, you know, yeah, you don't want people so, like <laughs> making it look like you're letting someone out of a junction. Yeah. Now, that could be fairly dangerous. In the 1970s Doctor Who story, The Demons, John Pertwee had a <laughs> remote control for Bessie, which did just that. It tooted the horn and flashed the lights, and he could steer the car from it as well. And mm -hmm. that was the 1970s. Was his uh, authentication a bit more secure? Presumably he was the only one yes. with the technology on the planet. Yeah, he's a Time Lord. That's his authentication. <laughs> okay, yes. Um... <laughs> So, yeah. yeah. He looks so this, pleased with himself when he said that. <laughs> this could be uh, perhaps a wake-up call because we're going to start seeing, you know, if this is happening at the moment, it's only going to get more so with newer cars who want to have the latest feature. So yeah. it might be a bit of a wake-up call for companies to, to say, oh, maybe we should think about this better next time. We should talk about this in uh, the next episode, maybe, have a bit I of a chat around some should. of the issues. Cool. Laura, what's the next story in the news? Netflix on Linux. Hooray! Yeah! So, uh, What's Netflix? There's another... Oh. <laughs> Netflix is like love film. Well, you can watch Doctor Who on Netflix. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Tell me more. Um, so there's another solution for, down, for allowing Netflix and other Silverlight-based streaming services um, called Pipelight, and it allows Linux web browsers to run Windows-only browser plugins. And it works. Does it? Yeah. Have you tried it? Yeah. Cool. I tried it on my uh, my laptop because I've got a Netflix account and um, I often watch programs on uh, Netflix and um, I thought, I wonder if I'll be able to get that working because the, the previous um, solutions involved you running a Windows browser uh, under Wine on mm. Linux, mm. which seems a bit clunky, um, oh, but that worked as well. 
But what Pipelight does is strip out the browser bit and um, you only run the plugin. So you actually run the Windows version of Silverlight in a Linux browser under Wine. Yeah. And it works. You get a you know Netflix in a browser. And it just works. Mm. I, I ended up filing a bug um, against it because um, it's a bit... Netflix is a bit finicky about the user agent string. And obviously my Linux browser is telling Netflix that I'm a Linux user. So Netflix was like, no, 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 that's not going to work. That's not going to work at all and rejects you. But if you fiddle the um, user agent string just for that one site and say for Netflix.com, set my user agent to Windows Firefox version 17, it works. Wow. It's pretty cool. Uh, But should we not be using things that, you know, work natively on Linux anyway, alternative services? Uh, what we should um, not use Netflix, even though you already have a Netflix account, because it doesn't work on Linux. Well, shouldn't we be saying to people, don't get a Netflix account, get your stuff through Google Play, because that works on Linux? Well, yeah, okay, that's good. And up until the program you actually want to watch isn't on Google Play or isn't on Amazon, and the content you want is siloed inside Netflix, and you want to watch that content. I'm sure Tony would side with me. If he wanted to watch Doctor Who, <laughs> he'd sign up with Netflix if it was the only oh, platform Oh, don't get him on your on. side with the Doctor Who I thought that would work. Bait. Well, thanks to the unique way the BBC is funded, I can get it on the TV, <laughs> and then, you know, record it and watch it on DVD go, or Blu-ray. Go, go, go. And we don't have yeah. Netflix anyway. No. <sighs> no. It's a good story, though. Well done, Alan. Enjoy. That's the end of the news. His was a better Doctor Who story. (laughs) The Ubuntu podcast needs you. Yes, you. If you hear something that tickles, titillates or taunts you, tweet us at UUPC or email podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. You can also talk to us on the telephone, Skype, Facebook and Google+. Find links to all these places on our website, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org. We really would like to hear from you. So go on, do your duty, keep calm and compose an email. It's time for the community news and events. First up this time around, the new VUDS, Virtual UDS, has just started. So there are some uh, activities going on for the rest of the week. No. No? No. Right. It's three days. Well, it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Until, right. until tomorrow. tomorrow. Until, or tomorrow. today, if you listening to the download or... Or, 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 or until last week. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Oh, well. Before. Yeah, okay. So what's going on for until tomorrow? So this is one of our mid-cycle uh, UDSs. Typically, we used to have real-world UDSs, which were immediately after a release, hmm. and they would be for planning the next release. Uh we're now doing UDS every three months as a virtual thing. So the one after the release is still planning for the next release. But the one in the middle of a cycle, which is what we're at now, um, is planning the remainder of this um, cycle. Right. So leading up to the end of this cycle, which is the end of October, the release date of 1310. Is so, it an opportunity to kick out ideas that aren't going to make it and... Yeah, reprioritize things a bit. Yeah, absolutely. It's that that's that's partly it to to get rid of stuff that that we know we're not going to be able to do by thirteen ten. Um, so yeah, it's a realignment of goals. It's a, a checkpoint, if you like, to make sure that we're. <laughs> you can tell you know, the manager doing... now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched uh, uh, Jono's introduction to UDS. You see, I uh, listened to Mark's uh, keynote speech. So right. yes, are realigning these, your are goals. These videos available to watch back on YouTube. As well? So. Interestingly, yes, huh, they're cool. um, they're all done in the same way we're doing this via Hangouts on Air, yeah. Um, and we make it um, as open as possible for people to join. Mm. So when a session starts, we post the link, and if you want to join in, you can join. Obviously, there's a limit. Whatever, set. whatever age you are. Well, <laughs> yeah, there's an interesting thing about that. Tony, tell us more about the age limit. Yeah, somebody called Howard Chan has written a, a blog post, which ended up on Planet Ubuntu, saying that he can't participate in VDUDS because he's under eighteen. In order to join a hangout on air, you have to be 18 or over. It's a VUDS, not VUDS. <laughs> yeah. yes. just, just to clarify. Um, <laughs> Visual Display Unit yes. Developer Summit. Yes. Um, yeah, so you have to be over 18 to join a hangout on air, and hangout on air are the things that are used for the face-to-face video discussions mm-hmm. um, as part of VUDS. Um, so, so does that mean that people can't, can't watch this either unless they're over 18 or is it only if you actually want to be one of the participants yes right not if you want to watch this the stream <laughs> correct 
Right. Okay, anybody can watch, but in order to participate, you have to be over 18. Yes. So lots of people have been saying, well, just tell them you're 18, fake your age, which <laughs> That's isn't... That's exactly what I told him to do. <laughs> which isn't a difficult thing to do, but, you know, there are, there's a point of principle here. Um, <laughs> he can participate, or anybody under 18 can participate by IRC and the other methods, but, you know, I can see it would be nice to have a method that was totally inclusive. I agree. But unfortunately, there isn't one that is free. Well, so some people suggested instead of using uh, Hangouts, we should use Mumble. Mm-hmm. Uh, because there, is, arguably, there isn't a huge benefit to us having the webcams on. Because what you actually see is us typing in IRC, <laughs> typing in Etherpad, looking up blueprints on <laughs> Launchpad. What you're actually watching is us, like, yeah. eyes all over the place. Not actually staring at the camera, looking at people and yeah. you know, eye contact. And you, you, you miss some of those body language cues mark mark talks about this in the in the um keynote that one of the things he misses from uh, uds is the the corridor conversations and being able to uh, check people's body language and yeah. how they're expressing themselves and and that's difficult to do over irc or indeed mumble um, and it's 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 also not that easy on a webcam where all you all you see is like the top third of someone's body and you don't get to take in the rest of it mm-hmm. um, so yeah it's it's tricky and mm, we're reviewing every time we review we have a post uds review to figure out whether we should carry on doing virtual uds's or whether we should have physical in-person uds's and it's all it's all up for discussion and jono is curating that discussion so tell jono <laughs> <laughs> that's jono at canonical.com exactly <laughs> Okay, the next item, Mark, what have you got for us? Uh, Nicholas Skaggs has written a blog post calling for users running Saucy to test Mir with multi-monitor setups. Ah. So presumably this means that Mir has now had the the required hammering to uh, to get it working with multi-head setups. Like, oh, yes. yes. Exactly. Cool. So it apparently works with dual screen. I haven't tested that yet, but some people in the community have. Mm-hmm. And uh, the blog post that Nick's written tells people... Uh, what specifically we're looking for and how to test it and how to report success or failure. Cool. Brilliant. Okay, Laura, there's some exciting audio news. Tell us about that. (laughs) Ubuntu Touch is now using Pulse Audio and Alsa for sound rather than Android's Audio Flinger. Right. What's Audio Flinger? It's Android's Audio Layer. (laughs) Right. So Surface Flinger is the the compositor, the, the, the desktop. Right. Audio Flinger is the audio stack, and then there's other bits. Right. They're, they're all called Flinger? No, they're not. No, oh. that just happens to be okay. that one. So why is but, it good that we're not using Audio Flinger anymore? Well, we're slowly replacing each of the bits with the standard bits that are in the Ubuntu stack right. on your desktop. So it, it kind of makes more sense for us to have the same software on all of them. Yeah. So that it's easier for us to support that software across all of yeah. them. We we don't we don't control Audio Flinger in any way. So Google could mm. do something with ah, Audio Flinger, yeah. and then you know we lose our audio stack on on the device. Yeah. So um, that's partly the reason. It's it's really just commonality. So we have the same stuff. You know, Mark's vision that he's talked about numerous times yeah. that we've reported on, which is the same stack across. You know, your your phone, your tablet, your fridge, your TV, your desktop, whatever. Um, you can't do that if bits of the stack aren't aren't you know something that you control or can can massage to your to your ends and yeah you know, we have no control over service flinger or audio flinger i guess it makes sense pulse audio has come on leaps and bounds over the last four or five years or so and it's really quite good now yeah i agree i i know there was a lot of flack and you know we're i'm sure people when they saw this uh this blog post from um david henningson said you know oh great i can ssh into my phone and kill pulse audio to fix it or something which mm-hmm. yeah you can it's not amazing should. isn't that brilliant <laughs> yeah somebody <laughs> should write an app for that a big kill pulse audio button <laughs> sits on the desktop or whatever the everyone's mm. touch equivalent there or thereof is mm. right okay the current reapproval process for the local community teams or locos is being replaced with a biannual health check process designed to be more interactive and give the loco teams a chance to catch up with the loco council why is that then well, I don't really know. Because he hasn't read it. Lo- I did read it. Um, I think I even put it in the notes. Um, but I, don't, I didn't quite pick up on why they wanted to do this. So it was quite a heavyweight process to approve loco teams. We'd Because um, there's verified loco teams. No. Well, ah, sorry. Did they get a we tick? Or- we originally called them approved loco teams. Yeah. 
and now they're called verified pro, uh, logo teams because I think people didn't like the word approved because it meant those who the aren't approved are approved are disapproved. Yes. We disapprove of them. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's all about language and we've got local teams all around the world for whom mm. English is not their first language and maybe the word approved translates to something you know negative for them. Um, so uh, verified teams would have to come to the local, ca- local council and document everything they do, um, I think, after uh, two years. Um, and this is quite somewhat onerous for them to do yeah. whereas it's a lot easier if we just like regularly check in with them and say hey how are you doing do you need any help anything wrong any problems anything we can do to help which I, th- I think is what that whole health check is about to make sure they're you know not doing something terrible or um you know not abusing their position in uh, in the community fair enough excellent sounds like a good plan mm. get verified locos okay what's happened mark Next story. Next story. Um, 12.04.3 has been released containing an updated kernel and X stack. I know it's what you've been, all been waiting for. So this is an updated version of the, the last LTS, LTS release, yeah. just with all the extra bits, bobs and security updates in the ISO image. So if you're deploying new systems, you just use that instead of the old one. Yes, and a new kernel. Ah. So ah, Which means latest device drivers as well. Exactly. Right. So cool. if, you're, if you're buying a server now... You know, if you use the 1204 image or 1204.2, it's possible that there's, I don't know, SATA drivers or some kind of drive, uh, driver required by the, by the mm. server that, that the old kernel wouldn't support. And so this makes it a lot easier. Cool. Brilliant. Alan, what's happening in the Ubuntu women world? Uh, they're having a scavenger hunt with oh. prizes to be won. Excellent. Ubuntu jewellery included. Yes. yes. A bit... Anyway, they're also running a yeah, um, a, <laughs> a bit um okay. Uh, they're also running a survey about uh, Ubuntu women and uh, uh, what you think of the uh, the project and uh, whether you know about it and loads of questions about you know how how they can improve things. So um, we we'll link in the show notes if you want to participate. We mm. certainly will. The first prize I should add is a Logitech webcam, yeah, uh, like the one that I'm using to make my face all pixelated on the internet right now. Um, <laughs> but yes, the jewelry and earrings and things are from Boutique Academia with Ubuntu logos. Yeah, they, they do on. actually look quite cool. If I wore yeah. earrings, I would really yeah. Quite they get like all them. knocked knotted in your hair, wouldn't they? Uh, Especially if you've got right dangly ones. Right. Cool. <laughs> <Moving> anyway. On. <laughs> <laughs> and um, finally. Finally. You go, Tony. Why okay, not? the Loco Council is calling for nominations. Three positions have been made vacant, and they want people to stand for, to participate so in is the this, Loco Council. Is, this isn't the same thing as the Community Council, is it? No, so, this is the Loco Council. Right. This is what's going to be doing health checks. Yes. You'll okay. Getting out the rubber gloves and asking people to <laughs> cough. <laughs> so if you were, if you were interested in what we we're just talking about the health checks, then check out the link in the show notes to find out how to um, be nominated, presumably for the community council. Can you nominate yourself? You can nominate yourself oh, or nominate yes. yourself. Yes. Excellent. Brill. And there's some events to talk about. There's a first one, which is Ohio Linux Fest, um, and that includes uh, UbuCon for the first time in a couple of years. It's being held on September 13th to 15th. And here's a message. <laughs> And we're back. Yes, after a year off, Ubuntu Ohio returns to present a new VUCON at Ohio Linux Fest. Catch us on Friday, September 13th at the Greater Columbus Convention Center. No, it isn't Odd Camp America, but it is how we roll here in the Buckeye State. Register for Ohio Linux Fest at ohiolinux.org. Remember, that's O-H-I-O. We'll be seeing you. Excellent. Thank you for that. Yes. Uh, we also have on the Friday, the 27th of September, uh, the Revolution Conference. <laughs> the what? I wasn't sure how to pronounce yeah. that. The, the, I is in, the R is in brackets. It might be a, a registered <laughs> trademark symbol gone wrong. Um, Revolution Conference being held in Shrewsbury. Shop, Shro- <laughs> That's easy for you to say. <laughs> Shrewsbury in Shropshire. Mm-hmm. And you can find out more at uh, 2013.shropgeek-revolution.co.uk, which we will put in the show notes. Um, yeah. We'll try and clear up all the spittle off it first. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. And Og Camp as well. Of course. Um, we have our first sponsor in place. Oh, yes. who's that? The Og Camp community. 
Yeah. 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 They are now our first gold sponsor because we've um, had such success with our Pay What You Want tickets. Mm. Lots of people have been very generous. Yes, very generous indeed. Um, So we've decided that they should be... Um, get the recognition as our first gold sponsor that's really cool yeah and it's really helped us um get like get the event off the ground make sure that we've got enough to cover our upfront costs so thank Mm. you very much everybody um and we should have a bit more information we're just confirming some more sponsors and some speakers um so we should have some more information by the next show yeah we are looking for exhibitors though so if you're interested in having a stand um if you're a community project or got something you want to show off let us know um you can email us at the podcast and we can pass the message on yeah um and you can tell people about what you're up to and if you want a bit of kudos then uh we always looking for prizes for our raffle yeah give us some prizes for the famous raffle cast Excellent. So come to our camp and we'll um, see you. Oh, go on. Am I going to have to run up and downstairs giving raffle prizes yes. to people? Yeah. yeah. So if you want to see Alan running up and downstairs, give us lots of prizes for him to give out. Yeah. yeah. It's the only reason I go. Do you know, I deliberately joined a gym this week, so I wouldn't <laughs> get laughed at quite so much. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have to go to the gym now. You, yeah. I was going to say, joining it is not enough. <laughs> no. Okay, you've got two months. Yes. So come and see Buff Alan at our camp. <laughs> <laughs> And that's all for this episode. Join us next time when we'll be discussing the pros and cons of the Internet of Things, reading your feedback and making your life just a little bit easier with some command line love. Excellent. Mm. Yes. Oh, apparently we forgot to mention Software Freedom Day, which is on the 19th of September. Oh. Oh. Excellent. Well, participate in that. We'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. Cool. Anyway, thanks for listening and watching. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.